Good evening. Hey, good evening. You are, uh, you're ready. Here we are. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, well, I don't know if I'm ready, ready, but <laughs> I'm at my computer and, and I've got everything I need, I think. Uh, um, literally, as soon as I sat down, closed the door, started the recording, called you. That's when I hear from the door, meow. <laughs> well, yeah, of course. Because I closed the door and I'm not, I'm not allowed to yeah. do that. So now she's That's now right. she's yeah. here, just begging for attention. So she will get attention. Uh, how are you? You doing all right? I'm doing okay. Doing very good. 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 Well, I hope I hope everyone out there watching this tonight is also doing well. It's a, another fine fall evening with great campaigns, and we are on session number ten of scenario number nine of Hood Strikes North, the Grand Campaign, and the clouds, the clouds, Roger, they're forming. <laughs> yeah. But all is not lost because due to the diligence of our fact checkers and route planners, I guess, <laughs> the people who make sure that uh, we're following the retreat path properly, they have pointed out that, uh, well, first of all, spoilers, if you've not watched the previous episode, go back and watch that. But we presume if you're here, you have not missed an exciting episode yet. So last week we saw what we thought was the untimely demise of Cheatham and Brown, but I guess rumor of their demise was uh, early, because they survive, apparently. Yeah, somehow a small group was able to squeeze through the city streets of Nashville to escape to the, uh, the west. Yes, with the, the timely uh, destruction of Fort Goreski, or whatever, however we pronounce it, they managed to, yes, do that. They They put on women's clothing, uh, got into the covered wagons, and snuck through Smith's lines uh, directly past them, and they all rallied past where Smith and the readout are. So uh, I, I have made that adjustment, and Brown is now a demoralized one with a uh, with one man power. But he lives, and Cheatham lives. And since uh, since they were not ultimately eliminated, uh, we, we had moved Cheatham to Smith, but now he's he's still with Brown. Uh, yep, that makes sense. Yes. Yep. So uh, I guess we should open our discussion here. Now that you've had a week to kind of look at all this, what what are your thoughts? Uh, uh, well, I ran the numbers multiple times in terms of points, and the disaster of manpower losses is now um, because of the minus three versus the the plus two is we're almost even now in terms of victory point conditions, which yeah, it's pretty impossible for me to quote win the game close quote because mm -hmm. I don't think now you've got uh, your forces are now in Nashville and strength. My gambit with Cheatham obviously failed, and I wasn't able to get support to him. So now I'm not sure how you want to handle this. I mean, I can certainly play it out. I've got something I'm going to try over the next several weeks, or we could uh, move in the uh, direction of uh, me attempting to try to get some sort of sudden victory tonight and end up probably with my whole army being destroyed. <laughs> sure, sure. Um, well, I'm certainly keen to play it out, of course. Uh, I, I do not discount anything because if anyone can make a goof, I can say, hey, <laughs> let's all vacate the city for some reason and, uh, and do that. Well, I I, I mean, there, there's, there's, as they say, there's a chance, point-wise, with the combination of the, the line of communication points and some other ways for me to potentially gather, I can get close. And this is, if this is a tournament game, we certainly should play it out. I think it'd be interesting to for, for me to try what I'm going to try to do. Yeah, I, I figure that I'm, I'm guessing the focus is going to perhaps maybe shift over Forrest's way, since he is the, the current <laughs> one that uh, is active and has that kind of aggressive tendency so i would not be too surprised if something came from that perhaps eastern flank we can we can we can see how this works okay well then let's do that be fun. because at the very <laughs> least if if we do get to a point tonight where you feel that it's it's nigh impossible mathematically as you say then we can uh, we can wrap it up and we can put a we can final we can do a final discussion about everything as a whole okay. in, in for the entire first playthrough of the campaign, and then we can set it up to do it again. Uh, okay. Yeah. Then uh, we will just proceed on as normal, and uh, did a random events, no Union Manpower, you get another opportunity for a reinforcement, so 
Which I believe I need a six. Ah, uh, that clever six. Three. Okay. Which I don't think there's any modifiers to that at all. So then we have leader transfer phase for the union first. Uh, I'm going to keep Smith there in Nashville. And uh, Stanley will stay with Whitaker. I think Schofield will come up to Cox. Thomas is going to come back to Smith. Join him. So that is uh, that is all for me. Hood can, I believe, get to that stack. Stuart and everybody. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Because that's he, on the control. He sure can. It doesn't count. So Hood's going to Mount his horse with his one leg. <laughs> Strap him in, boys. And with his staff, make it down there. Okay. Anything else? I don't think so. Um, okay. Then we will move on to da -da -da, the action cycle, since I don't have any attachments that I'm aware of. So. I do not either. The sub is still pretty far to the south there. Okay. Well, then we move on. Here is our uh, initiative rolls. And uh, as always, good luck. Good luck to you. That's my four. And there's your five. five. Off you go. Okay. Stuart's going to activate French and Waffle for movement. So they both pick up a fatigue. One die plus two. Five. We're going to waffle first, which is so it's three to one is a plus two ratio. Creek is a minus one, and artillery is a minus one. So this will be a zero attack by waffle. Okay. So here's the attack roll five. Pretty good. Here's the defense. Three. Three. So there's a destruction. That's yeah. Let's put a fort destroy a out there. So that's a D for me. His B's done for the day. But he can move in there. I have five movement points. Yeah, so French so French. French is gonna go one, two, three, four, and Stuart wherever he is with hood. I'll slide hood over. I'm having trouble finding Mr. Stewart. There he is. It's going to join him. Well, that's okay. step one. Initiative. Die roll is a three. Okay. Here is mine. It's a one. It's a one. Okay, now. So, Forrest is going to activate his entire stack. Their movement. Two die plus three, six. So that's going to be one, two, three. There. Okay, initiative. Oh, one. Mm, well, don't discount my ability to roll one. <laughs> oh, just barely. Okay. Well, well, well. That's unfortunate. Uh, this then means that. Uh, Let's see, we will have Nipe activate G. Johnson. Here's the movement. Oof! <laughs> they're, just they're, enough. They're remounted, <laughs> but uh, just so. Okay. So. Uh, those horses aren't very good. That's they're right. nags. Exactly. All right, so uh, initiative six. I think you win this regardless, right? Uh, me? Yes. No, you, I'd get low ties. You get low ties. Okay, well, doesn't matter. Okay. It's yours. Um, okay, so they will go to two. And they will build an abatee. Okay. Okay. So, luckily, I got no artillery because we're good. We don't we don't endanger the citizens great. of this of great city of Nashville. Yeah. All right, uh, initiative five. Three. Um, Stanley, activate Wagner. Here's his movement, plus one. 
three. And he will transfer to him and go one, two, three to there. Initiative four. Uh oh. <laughs> Forrest is going to attempt an assault on Johnson and Cooper. Let's see if I bring in French and Armstrong, that gets me to seven. I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to bring in French and Armstrong with Forrest. So they, so now I just need one roll of five or less. That gets me to seven, which means I'm going to have a negative one ratio. I'm always going to have a negative one because I can't match your 12. Correct. Yeah. So I just need a die of five or less. <laughs> Two sixes in a row. It's a miracle. <laughs> Oh, we are coming up oh. on the Christmas season here in Tennessee. Oh, initiative. All right. Uh, now there's one. one. <laughs> I'm fine. Okay. Um, wow, this is uh, this is getting dangerous here. So Stanley will activate Wagner. He'll march. We'll get a three. So they'll go to there. Is there any reaction uh, with two remaining? No, roll stand. Okay. Um, yeah, I will. I will just march there. That's fine. Uh, initiative. Uh oh, there's my one. There's your six. six. <laughs> Glad that happened then. Another six. <laughs> okay, we'll we'll try that same scenario again. Rucker fatigue three. And French to petite three. That's that's not good because I need those guys to have something left in the tank, or at least French to have something left in the tank. Uh, here's the attempt. That's a one. Um. So yeah, we're gonna assault John G. Johnson and Cooper with those two guys. So that's going to be a ratio of minus one. The type is going to be a plus one. The tactical is a plus one. As we discussed, artillery in the city doesn't apply. There's obviously no flank doesn't apply. I do get the force bonus. So what I see is three up and one down for a final of a plus two. That does sound correct. Okay, this will probably make for either a very short evening or... Six. <laughs> the eastern gates. All right, here we go. Here's defense. Two. Oof. All right, so it's a plus six. Yikes. That's on a five, though, so it's not going to be too difficult. All right. Good news is it's just a straight-up advance for me. So it's 2DR for me. Oh, I will give you... One more manpower losses from me to you. And they just came back with these crappy horses. <laughs> and they were sent to packing. The horses were panicked by a brief, intense artillery barrage. Two, three. They will go disorganized. And I will lose uh, one from Cooper. I'll lose them both from Cooper. Gonna go down one, two. All right, and they must go four away. So they'll go one, two, three, and they've got to stay out of your. So they'll go there. The pest house. Yes. For they. Wonder what that means. Been... Supposed to means pestilence house, like we're probably to yeah. sick people. Well, there you go. Welcome back to the city. Okay. Straight up advance for me. So French, now I believe Stuart, the other guy was Rucker, so he has to go. Yeah, I'll move, and Hood has to go. Well, Hood could stay, but I'll move Hood. Hood's going to want to see downtown Nashville, which is a great, great town. Go visit. And yeah, I'll move Forrest as well. Okay, knit. Five. Uh, Five. So high ties, so that's yours. High ties go to me. Okay, well, we'll, uh, French will go to fatigue four. 
And he's going to dig in. Initiative. Three. One. One. Okay, Forrest is going to activate Rucker, Ross, and Armstrong. Rucker goes to fatigue four. He's going to entrench. Ross goes to fatigue two. He's going to entrench. Armstrong goes to fatigue three. He's going to throw up a flanks or fuse, so he'll have to roll for... He's just going to two, it looks like. Two. Yeah, he's going to two, so he does not have to roll for Sten March. That's it for them. Initiative. Two. Five. Five. Okay, I will... I'll have Schofield activate Cox, Whitaker, and Wood. I'll go to fatigue level one. Here's their movement. Plus one. Four. So Wood will go one, two, three, four. And Whitaker will go one, hmm, yeah, two, three, four. And Schofield will go one, two to there, with two remaining. And he will make a column of root attack. Oh, I haven't seen one of those <laughs> since the first time I played this when I did this all the time. I realized that's not what you want to be doing. I don't know. That seems, <laughs> that seems okay. All right, it does. So we're going to do a negative three for our type. Um, we bring this guy back from the dead. <laughs> Only to kill him again. Walking, oh, walking wounded. All right. Uh, my ratio is... 18, so it's plus 17, so that's combat modifiers. So, yeah, for, oh, it's 14 or more. Okay, 14 or 1 is just a plus 13. So plus 13 is the cap. Oh, okay. Yeah. So with that, I will still get a plus 13, minus 3, so it's a plus 10. Is plus 10, case. okay. Okay, there we go. So, yeah, plus 10. Uh, here's... You're telling me there's a chance. <laughs> there's a chance. You could roll a 6, and I could roll a 1. <laughs> I could. That's, yeah. All right, so here's my roll. Six. Or not. Uh, well. Oh, I did as best I could. Plus ten, so he is he is eliminated. And he will go to okay, Smith. Jim, now we'll transfer to Smith. Yep. Okay, so. Brown is dead in a doornail. So that, and. That's one, one manpower loss for me. I gotcha. And then I can advance in there, and I can battle again, <laughs> since I still have movement. And uh, this time... The ratio is 9, so I will use, uh, I will do a normal attack on this one. Um, so it is then uh, an 8 plus 8 for ratio, and I have two more artillery than you, so that's good. That's no effect. Actually, I have all six, yes. all six X's covered with the, yep. with the river, yeah, well. and then minus 5503, so that looks like a plus 3? Plus 3. Yep, so it is a plus 11 then. Okay. Alright, so here's here's the roll for that. 5. And another another wipeout. Senseless. Uh, now, now, Cheatham is officially... You no, know, he's got a guy somewhere. Uh, he does have does bait he... way down there, so we can get down to bait. Boy, ride, cheat him, ride. <laughs> All right, we'll give you another two manpower losses. And then we will advance. Grease through the woods. Advance in there, and... Watch you. Oh, he slips through. He goes somewhere, there's general bait. There's general bait. <laughs> that picked up some much-needed points, but we'll all be for naught if I can't take Nashville back. So here's just my initiative. Five. Four. Yours again. Okay. How do I want to solve this problem? Okay. Stanley is going to activate Wood and Wagner. Let's get fatigue. Wagner will need an extended march. So here's the movement. Four. That 
doesn't help me very much. He will stay with, and he'll just uh, roll an extended march, plus one. Ah, see? You never, never, never fails. All right, so Wagner. Is that, uh, who is that was Wag who is that? Wagner moving. Okay. And he rolls a natural six, so he flips, and Stanley will go there with him, and then Wood will just go there. Okay. Uh, initiative. Five. Two. Okay. Well, let's just go ahead and try this first. We'll take MacArthur to fatigue level one. And we'll attempt an assault on Forrest. So here's the assault attempt. Uh, Smith is a five. It fails. So next initiative. Four. Four. Uh, high ties go Confederate. Okay. Take Warren to fatigue two. Here's his movement, one die plus one. Five, so you could go six. Here's his extended march. Four, he's okay. Six hexes. And just for a VP correction, I believe when I put Brown back on the board, I did not give you your casualty back, so I'm going to do that now. Oh, okay. So I believe you are officially at 28, not 29. Okay. Uh, Frank's going to go... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to there. He's going to stop there. Initiative. 3, 5... That's yours. Let's try this again. We'll take MacArthur to fatigue level two. Make preparations for another assault attempt. Here's the roll. It goes off. Okay. Now we will ask General Thomas for a grand assault attempt. Here's that roll. And it fails. All right, so here is what we got. got plus one for the assault, minus one for ratio. One, two, three, four, five hexes covered, but one of them will come off from Jackson. So that is plus one for a final flank. Mm -hmm. All right. So I see two up and one down for plus one. Yep. Okay. Well, 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 well. Okay, here's plus one. Here's the assault attack. Three. Comes a four. Oh, oh. oh, there it is. That's it. Whew, okay. Uh, <laughs> plus three. Uh, it's a small R. So you don't have to go very far. Let's see. How many so, power did I have? So four, I had, and five, ten. seven. It turned out to be a plus three. Plus three. So I fatigue. And you have, what, five, you said? So one DR? Seven. Oh, so you have seven. One DR. Okay. Take it off of French. Nope, oh, wrong way. Okay. I get two fatigues. And he flips. He flips. And they can go, they have to go away. Once again, I'm pulling up our retreat charts. Oh, because it's a yeah. small, so you have to go two, right? A minimum of two. The first, yeah. The first one, you can't go into that fort because yep. that would be. So you have to go into Jackson. But then, if you go into the Olivet Cemetery, then that is crossing across a road. So that'd be more manpower losses, potentially. Yeah. So I have to go to Olivet. Okay. So, so there's one more manpower each. Right. So two more manpower losses. Okay. You at thirty-one. Okay. He's gonna stop there because if he goes, he can't go anywhere he can't else. Go right. Yeah. Um, okay. And, and the hex is yours. Right, so we'll 
move back into Nashville, <laughs> the other side of town. All right, uh, initiative. It's two. And a three, and you know what? I'm going to pass. <laughs> I think this game is over. I will officially pass as well, and uh, we will call that uh, a turn. And if you want to call that game set match, I will. I I, I think so. I mean, it was. Uh, we will send over a fine case of peach, <laughs> peach brandy and or schnapps and. Uh, because even if um, Lee and Stevenson combine their recover, they're going to be at four total manpower. You're probably going to, these guys are stuck now in a, in a hole. You know, I was looking at the, the chance I saw tonight was potentially to get the auto victory by hoping those guys could get in there. A, which they did the second time in Nashville. I bet there's not many people who play this game <laughs> and end up with Confederates getting twice, twice in the Nashville. Both hexes. <laughs> that that yeah. was amazing to see that because uh, you never say die, and I love that. Yeah, at this point, these guys are probably. I mean, you still have got a ton of manpower left. You have Cox up there with nine, uh, Whitaker with five. You have Jay Miller who's sitting there with eleven. Uh, admittedly, it's a hodgepodge group, but uh, plenty of manpower left to. to Keep those guys as you like to put it in a in box. A box yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and they're never going to get out. You of got this. in. Um, you got in with the Roach <laughs> Motel, but you ain't getting back out. Yeah. I mean, and, and again, historically, even if I would somehow would have managed to hold on, they would have not gotten out anyway. Uh, this has just been a hoot. Oh, yeah. Um, let's, uh, what, I, I can. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's, we'll, we'll put a capper in this. Let's do, uh, we'll final, uh, oh, I've got the victory point up here, officially tally, whatever, uh, for whatever scale level that is. Um, cause I haven't looked at it in a bit, but let's see, you've still got the, uh, see, I didn't put all my man oh, losses on here that I just got, so you got, so you got 64 another... points straight up. And then I've got you right now at 31 manpower losses. Okay. Which is, uh, what? 93. And then you've got yeah, I've, I, I me at, crossed over now to where I'm a negative. Yeah. Three. I'm at 42. So it's, uh, 84. To ninety three, negative ninety three. So, so this is a decisive union victory. <laughs> okay. I, I was saying if this was a tournament where I was trying to uh, avoid potentially, if I could somehow make this work not as bad a defeat, uh, would have been to retreat, try to get my guys uh, out of harm's way, and hopefully take Murfreesboro was the only way I could see to get any potentially any points. Right. Um, of any significance because there's 12, 12 points for taking Murphy's bro the first time. And then 12, if I can hold on until the end of the game yeah. and then get all the, the line of communications for the divisions. And that, um, I've, but, that would have certainly gotten my attention at that point because I figured, Oh, I, that's what I thought Loring was going to do. I figured you were going to take bait and Loring and then start heading that way with cheat. Che yeah. I, I, yeah. Even doing the math on that, all you had to do was let me go. You could say, okay, fine, go ahead. And you could run away. And I couldn't get enough points to win. Oh, yeah. Because uh, cause the, the manpower losses I suffered last session took that out of the – because my, my plan last session was to get my 30 points and then do what I just said. Mm -hmm. But you're, you're just you – know, I got enthralled with actually winning the automatic victory, and, and that set Lee up to get – Lee's core to get smashed. And then when I ran the numbers this week, it was like uh, – Okay, I've got one one chance to to win outright, which is to do what I did, mm -hmm. and then a, then a longer chance to uh, make it close. I could I I just couldn't see getting enough manpower losses to, which is sad because I had a huge huge advantage in manpower losses. Well, when when I rolled the six, <laughs> I started to sweat, and then when I got the assault on the second time and then I failed to get Thomas involved and I'm starting to understand oh. I'm starting to understand General Grant's trepidation with uh, <laughs> Mr. Thomas uh, because he I don't I think I got maybe one good grand assault this whole yeah. thing but uh, yeah I was you had me sweating there because I thought that was a great second attempt once you got in there I was like there's no way he's going to get through Cooper and Knipe and then just like butter you <laughs> right through him yeah, that's great. Um, yeah, that was that was. I thought if I could get in there and I could build up my abatis, keep my one flank, so you couldn't get a. You'd have to fight. You know, make your decision. Are you going to try to create a, a larger flank, burn fatigues, and I put Loring up there potentially try to sap wood before you attempt anything yeah. to the yeah. to the east. Right. Um, 
And uh, but anyway, uh, I think looking back on the campaign, I think my big mistake, and it was a huge mistake, which was pointed out, I think, by at least one person, uh, was allowing you to trap Stewart there by Harpeth, the Harpeth River uh, to the east of Franklin. Right. That it, I, and there was just I, I completely miscalculated your your needs because I destroyed two of your wagon trains. At that point, I don't think you cared about whether that third wagon train made it or not. You, you, I think your focus then shifted to stopping me. Yeah. Um, where I was thinking you were going to continue to move towards Nashville. Instead, you turned and, as you like to say, put me in a box. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't figure out a way to get out of that box without potentially losing a lot of manpower, which I was trying to avoid. And, and it ended up costing me days at the Harpeth River with a core that was my, my big maneuvering. Right core and that's uh, considering they came from the southwest they came all the way up i mean you pushed them all the way up the natchez trace yeah. and then they cut over and then once they got trapped behind the bar path your best maneuver capability was locked for at least yeah. two or three days yeah, um, two or three days because everybody else was uh working their way down the franklin pike which was that was my big strategic error um i should have uh kept pushing them to the north to get close to Nashville and force you to have to deal with core knocking on the door yeah. um, as opposed to uh, giving you a chance to, to pull back and then uh, making a good fight in Nashville which um, which you did it's, well you um, mentioned the wagons <laughs> circle back to the wagons uh, the wagons to me I've been I've been agonizing over those damn wagons literally figuratively <laughs> But they present such a weird dichotomy, especially for this scenario. They're only worth six points apiece. That's 18 points. And yet, yeah. we spend so much mental energy haranguing ourselves to get those damn wagons toward Nashville or Murfreesboro. And it's like, you know, when I lost two of them, I said, well, you know what? I, I'm not going to move heaven and earth to save six more points so look you got 12 points good on you and then i just i got it up there to brentwood and i said you know come get it if you're going to get it but you didn't and and i mean for for certainly tried but at that point it's like so if i lose another six points look at all the other manpower losses that i've i've suffered so i was yeah. I, I, I there's something about act one with those wagons that i think I think it's because they put so much arbitrary emphasis on them in the race for Columbia and the early oh. set, set piece scenarios that you're like, I got to save the wagons. Don't let anything happen to the wagons. Well, and it's just like, well, they don't, they don't I, provide anything, you know? And I went after them. Right. You know, that was the, that was how Stewart ended up down there. Right. I, I went after those, those, those points. And, um, and it, uh, I lost my advantage that I, and then, then of course I ended up with winter weather and then, and not having gotten, I think, I think, and this is my thought and you can certainly cr not agree. I think the 30 points you've got to get before winter weather because oh, winter yeah. weather went by yeah. those, those six days, which is a good fifth of the game mm -hmm. go by. You just can't get anything done. At all. Yeah, if, if, you, if you can just sit there and gain points that nobody can do anything about for five or six days, wow. Just, I mean, that's, that's yeah. Buko. Yeah, it's Buko and, and, um, and that, uh, this is, uh. So what you're saying is my brilliant stratagem with the wagons and letting Stuart take the wagons, that, that worked <laughs> flawlessly. Well, I, yeah, I guess. Um, but also, and I, and again, I realize this is a, Starting the same controversy again. Our switch to the rolling single die for initiatives to me suddenly significantly suddenly. balanced the game out. Yes, I I, I know uh, I, I'm with you. Everybody else is going to be like, just hush, you guys. But really, that's when it turned. I, I don't know if it was just the mental thing. It certainly seemed like from that night on, I stood a fighting chance in some of these attacks that would normally just you'd roll over me, you know. Well, I was, you know, I was getting these strings of initiatives that were kind of ridiculous. I mean, um, and, and I still need to, to, I've got the software to do it, I think, to do a test, which I need to do, take take a day and just sit there and write the test up and see. You know, actually, you know, not have to manually roll this thing 100,000 times, but just let the computer take over and just let it do it. Um, and then we'll have enough numbers to actually prove or disprove the theory well it'll also but, be and i don't want to say i don't want to say that that changed it because because again it 
the dice roll had nothing to do with me making that uh, move to oh, right. put uh, my core core to the east of Franklin and Ooh. and then and uh, and then you did a great job creating a and, and again I got a little focused on Franklin and I put a lot of time building up manpower there before I realized you you built it up to the point where it was just going to be a I'd recreate history mm-hmm. I would have I think you know I, I could have potentially tried it and maybe got it maybe. Yeah, maybe. Ifs and nuts and super. <laughs> well, I think you and I have both learned uh, quite a bit, as you especially as the Confederates, that every single thing you do, I mean, this has always been ingrained with me for the whole system, and that's how much I, I hate the CRT and, and how bloody <laughs> it is anyway, but you, when manpower is a, a severe differential of, of plus two, minus three on this one, every single thing you have to do has this implicit risk analysis of of like that i mean how much are you willing to lose getting franklin so that you can make up two points per turn is it worth losing eight or ten victory points so that over the course of five turns that it it, you know is worth it for for you to pause the result yeah well this was the first time i've played a non-solo campaign the other so campaigns i've done not solo without there's a lot of complexity which this doesn't have which i think is but at the same time it's more complex than doing a uh one of the regular scenarios or basic scenarios they call it. so this is a really great introduction scenario for somebody like me to play because you're not worrying about supply yes the taking the taking the supply out is really nice and it makes sense that it's not here because both sides are pretty solid on a supply line so it's good for me it was good to play this i would definitely maybe play it wiser um i don't know well a couple of i mean i'm exceptionally excited about playing it again because i I, with a little trepidation of course because i see everything that you had to deal with as the confederates i was like i I don't want to deal with all that rain Ah." but uh i'm excited because we, we talked about how you know, there's there's a table that you want to sit there and say, okay, you need a mission plan for each one of these core. If this guy's yes, going to do this, you this, do. You know, and if you if you and I didn't have that. I didn't have a good okay. Am I on schedule or behind schedule? Right. That that's what enabled me to make I think some errors. And you're talking about random events. It, we had well, I guess late rain does rain and late rain does dominate the events table. Yep. Uh, but we only had one army initiative change, which I thought would be crucial. Mm-hmm. And that was, and, we had one command paralysis, which was, that came at a really bad time. <laughs> it was like, that, that would probably, looking back, that, 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 that was crucial. Right. Um, that hurt. <laughs> I think it was command paralysis followed by straight up rain, I think is what happened. Well, I also now looking back in hindsight with all the stuff related to the Union cavalry, that could have been absolutely crippling. Oh, me. Uh, yes, but I that that was a huge positive for me that that unfortunately I I wasn't able to take advantage of. Yeah, because I was just sitting here watching you go. There's no way you're going to keep rolling <laughs> not six. You'll get a six sooner or later. <laughs> and look at all those guys just sitting there off That's map. Right. That would have That's right. uh, con- completely uh, turned it around if you'd been able to get that cab core back up on and running. Uh, in some ways, it would have been I, even worse for me. <laughs> in, in some ways, I think for for me and my playstyle, having them as unmounted infantry or unmounted cavalry acting as an infantry unit, that was kind of helpful for a few things, like with McCook. It seemed seemed like it was for you. I did think you you maximized that, and that, that's I I still not not sure how to play that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, do you try to get them off map? Before they go unmounted, I don't know. I, I, yeah, I mean, you, like you, I was sitting there going, I know that they're supposed to be going this way at some point, <laughs> but I don't know why. Now I do. Yeah, uh, yeah. I just can't believe there's no like modifiers as the game goes on. It makes it more likely they'll, they'll come back on that. Right. There just isn't. Well, I mean, they can only balance so much. They they gotta figure that yeah. the players are gonna yeah. take some risks and you know and just. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's it's this is an an, a, an emulation. And... But with all of that being said, I want to just first congratulate, uh, you know, 
Mr. Zbokowski and uh, Beach and Withers for an excellent campaign design. I, I think this is great. I think it's, uh, for all the campaigns that I've played, this is so nice and concise, uh, compact, and, and every all the moving parts work very well for what they're attempting to convey to the player uh, as far as the importance of things. So my hat is off, and I look forward to switching sides and, and playing this through again. Yeah. yeah. So do I. Yeah, and I totally agree. And it's uh, for me again. You know, I, I what I get out of the system is this perspective that you don't get by reading history books, and it reinforced what I've read about this campaign. And I think if the game is trying to be an emulation, I think it does an excellent job of that. So yeah, I agree. Hats off to to the designers. Well, just know that you Great. have put the ever loving fear of John Bell Hood in all of the citizens of Nashville <laughs> in the year eighteen sixty four. Yeah, he actually. He actually got to got to see the sights for a brief amount of time. Yeah. But I, I bet there's not many. I guess I, don't, I doubt there's many players who managed to get will get two to, two separate chances to be in Nashville. You hear that, folks? The gauntlet has been tossed down. <laughs> Roger Kittleson says, Bring "Without it. actually winning the game." That's right. <laughs> actually winning the game. Oh. Well, oh, I well. guess this is a great place to wrap it up here. Yeah, uh, I, I will invite yeah. everyone who has been watching this for low these 10 sessions to finally, now that we've put a, a bow on everything, wrapped it all up, uh, go ahead and make your comments heard there and uh, stick around, of course. We are going to switch sides and probably next week, I would assume, we'll just jump right in and, and take it from the top again. Um, why not? Yeah. Don't know why not. But uh, we hope you've enjoyed it. We thank you so much for the support and all the feedback that we've gotten thus far and all the corrections more than anything. We know we have uh, yes. very dedicated uh, watchers and and, uh, and people out there that are giving us the rules corrections that, that help as we're going along because, as we said, a lot of moving parts. But uh, your enthusiasm is not unnoticed. So click that like and subscribe button and uh, tell your friends about this channel. We got lots and lots of other stuff. And after we finish this second playthrough, then we will move on to whatever our next title is. Uh, we haven't figured that out yet, but I, I, really it's up to you if you want to go back to 1862 or if you want to move on to something else. But I leave that to you. Well, you, uh, you have a great one and uh, we will talk to you next week. Thank you, Patrick. Bye-bye.